we then get to an explanation of the gyroscopic effect using those arrows or vectors. Because if I want to explain what's going on here, I think of my spin around this axis as perhaps represented by this arrow. And I can think about my twisting moment or couple, which is this one, about that axis represented by this arrow. That's the, if you like, the clockwise direction of rotation. Now, do you remember that a force changed the direction of the velocity, but it didn't change the magnitude of it? Well, a torque changes the direction of the spin, or the angular velocity. So, if this is the direction of the spin, and this is the direction of the torque, then you'd expect the spin to change in that direction. And lo and behold, it moves around there. Which is precisely what happens. We have spin, torque, and look, now it's moving. It's gone over there. It's the rotational analogue of circular motion. And we kind of understand why it is that school kids find circular motion, centripetal acceleration, difficult to comprehend. We really must understand why the gyroscopic effect is a step more difficult to understand because things like angular momentum and torque are already quite tricky to understand.